Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are talking about the Unigine game engine. Now if you're thinking to yourself, wait a minute here, am I having deja vu? Didn't we literally just do this? Well I can't really argue with you because yeah, we just did. On April the 8th, so just a couple days back, I said that Community Edition would be coming soon. And the Community Edition is a new free edition of the Unity game engine, and well, soon is today, literally right now. You can download it yourself. So the Community Edition is a new free edition of Unity, and Unity is a game engine that has been around for a number of years now. And in the past, it was primarily focused on simulation and uh, you know virtual worlds, that kind of stuff, not really on games. And they kind of missed the boat a little bit on the whole indie game marketplace for having somewhat ludicrous pricing, especially for you know an indie developer. Well, now they have this new community license, which is a lot like what Unity's license is all about. This is what we talked about back on April the 8th. They now have this new 100K income or less version. So if you make less than 100 grand, it's free. Uh, you can't use it in certain industries. You can't use it for you know DARPA projects or for the US Navy or whatever. You can't use it in um, real industries like natural gas, oil mining, and so on. You can't use it for gambling. Uh, but other than that, you can get started with it from completely free, and there is another tiered license. We're going to get to that in just a second. Now, the other reason why I'm talking about Unigine today is because Unigine 2.11 was released. And what you saw me use a couple days ago was a late beta, and there's quite a bit new in 2.11. So we're going to talk about that today. We're going to look at what's new there as well. If you're interested, Unigine is available at unigine.com. I will link that in the linked article down below. I'll also have a link to the previous video I did, although I don't know if there's any value in watching that now that this is out and it's actually available. All right, so let's head on over and take a look at Unigine itself. You can look at that and you think, huh, that's pretty pretty nice looking engine. And I got to agree, it is a nice looking engine. From the little bits I've played with it here and there, it's a... Uh, it's nice to work with too, to be honest. And here you can see one of their material samples. This is one of the things that happened with the 2.1 release, uh, 2.11 over the release I was looking at earlier, is there are a lot more samples to work with. And you get an idea of what the, that's why I really like these examples. They give you an idea of what the renderer is capable of. So you can see the various different kind of renderings it makes. Now I've had some people comment about performance. I wouldn't really worry too much about performance. This is going through video capture. Uh, it's on a 1080p, so it's not a crap machine I'm recording this on, but I'm very video capping it and running things in real time, you're not really seeing the reality of what performance really looks like. But you get an idea of what the renderer looks like. And in my opinion, the renderer looks quite good. All right, so that's this is the editor. Um, Again, the other video, I kind of went into a little bit more depth about how things work, and I'm going to probably do a bit of a tutorial at some point in the future, because this one does have me intrigued, for sure. Um, but it's a composition-based system. You come over here, you've got the entities, the objects over here. You start adding properties to them. Your programming language options are quite robust. You can write your games in C++, in C Sharp, and in their own scripting language. There is no visual scripting language. A couple people questioned that. Note, there isn't. Uh, the, the worlds are ultimately organized into worlds, basically levels. So here's a vertex color example. Uh, we got a couple of other ones in here. So uh, glass world available here. So these are some of the examples that are available. This is one of the coolest ones because it actually showcases what Unigine is all about. So I'm going to head on over now to the launcher. With 3.11, we've got some updates there for sure. And that's where this particular demo came from. So if you want to learn it, this is one of the great places to go. Plus there's the documentation, which we'll also get to right now. All right, so let's head on over. Uh, when you first launch Unigine, you're going to get the Unigine SDK browser. You need to have an account to log in with. By the way, you can download it and you can get all that stuff from uh, Unigine.com or whatever the hell their website was. I just showed it a second ago. What you're going to see now is when you come in here, SDKs, I previously was using the beta. Now I'm using the Unity 2 community version. Uh, that's what you're going to want to go ahead and download and do an install of. You're going to probably want to get rid of the other one, by the way. Uh, but now when you come in here, you're going to find this category was previously empty. Now we've got some add-ons. We've got things like uh, vegetation, um, editor. We've got a road tool creator. Uh, so you can create roads on the fly in your version. You've got some models to work with for a European, uh, Eastern European countryside model. So prefabs like power lines and trucks and so on. And then we've got some VFX samples to work with. So previously in the beta version I demoed earlier on, there were no add-ons available. Also, if you come into the samples category, this part is greatly improved. In the last version in the beta, there was only one sample available and that was uh, 
this guy right here, the third person platformer. So if you watch the other video, that is the demo that I'm showing hands on. The video we saw this time is the art sample, which has a ton of different projects in it that basically showcase the graphical capabilities, materials, and, and so on that are built into uh, Unity and Engine. I probably would actually start there, but also you've got uh, samples for VR. You'll notice that all three of these are VR ready samples. This is from more of an engineering background. This was a, an oil refinery training video kind of setup. And this was a, a Tesla machine and action kind of scene. It's actually really cool. I did a video of it in a previous video actually a while back. So you see here in the demo side, we've got a couple more options available. If you want to grab a demo, basically you come in, you do an install, and then if you want to play with it, you can either you can run it directly or you can copy and create it as a project, and then it will show up in your My Projects. You can go ahead and open it. You can use your code editor. Your editor of choice is a version of Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code with the C Sharp modular, uh, module enabled. So back to the uh, script. So we have those demos right there. Plus we've got a couple of, you know, so in their own scripting language. You got a bunch of different topics here, UI, programming, force field, lights, so on, 3D model, rendering. Uh, we got some C++ examples. So if that's the language you want to go with, you got a couple options there. We've got a few for C Sharp and third party. Now, the big thing that we've got going on here, though, is these additional demos. They didn't exist before. All right, so that is kind of what is uh, new from the launcher side of things. And the cool thing is you want to know about documentation and support. Well, let's go on over here. The online documentation for this guy is somewhat excellent, to be honest. They've got pretty much everything you need to get going is here. So getting started, you drill down. There's a whole bunch of things to like, you know, basically get going with things. If you are working with the SDK browser, the thing we were just looking at, you got to walk through of how the various different pieces and sections of that work. And then we get down here, we get into the straight up programming. You got, again, documentation for each of your programming languages. So you want to learn how to do C++. You've got usage examples and reference document for C++. We've also got that for C Sharp. We've got that for their own scripting language, their own shader language, etc. So everything is very well documented. So that was one of the really nice plus sides with Unigine is the documentation is quite good and the sample base that you have to get started is also quite nice there. So um, yeah, documentation in this is all up to date. This is for 2.1.1 that was just released. So do be aware of that. It is all available. That's kind of nice as well. If you want to check out the documentation, by the way, you can check out the docs without having to go to um, or install anything. It's actually all on the line available right there. So the documentation is online. You don't need to download stuff first. You can actually go and check it out. If you want to you know, get an idea of how things work without having to download everything, uh, you can do it that way. Okay, so that is it. We're heading back over here. So we're talking now a little bit more about Unigine community. Now this was again, the freebie version. Now this page itself is more about Unigine itself and all the great things it can do. Uh, so it's got, uh, you know, VR work, post-processing graphic effects. And the nice thing is that some of that stuff is also really easy. So if you want to start doing graphic effects, you literally can just do it coming into rendering and start turning things on and off. So if you want depth of bloom effects, bloom effects, there they are, they're on. Lens, cross, sun shaft, shadow lights, depths of field, sharp and sure, we got everything going. It looks like I'm drunk as hell, but we've got everything going. So you can easily tweak your graphic settings here. They're very easy to work with, and they're pretty much everything you would expect to see is in there. So that part is definitely nice. Um, scalable, good performance. The tool set is pretty nice. I haven't had any issues with the editor. The performance is nice. I haven't had any crashes. There's a decent amount of learning materials out there. And as you saw, the documentation is quite solid. Now, the key thing, again, and the reason why I'm talking about Unigine on this engine at all, frankly, is because of the changes to the licensing. So we now have community and we well, community free and community pro and then everything else goes beyond that so what do we get here well at the community free level um, this was no royalties a couple of conditions again so you have to make less than 100 grand over the last 12 months and you can't work in certain industries uh, you can also use it free for non-commercial use so if you're never going to make any money off your game you just use the free edition and you are off to the races so here you get the core unigine engine the uh, Unigine editor. Hey, look, it comes with dark mode. I know that's kind of a bit of a dig at Unity there, but hey, it does. It has the dark mode editor. And I know some of you people love that. Uh, VR support and you can get forum account. And so if you go up to the uh, $150 a year community pro plan, you get everything here, uh, badge on the forum, access to beta versions and no restrictions on funding. So really this is this minus this. So now you can make as much money as you want, as long as you aren't working in those specific industries. So if you're using this to make it for a, a simulation software for a nuclear reactor, nope, you're still over at this version right here. Another thing is this engineering version, I believe actually just got 60% cheaper. I believe it was 10 grand. Now it seems to be six grand. So that's an improvement. And then if you get into the enterprise sim stuff, it's a contact us. And if it's a contact us, it normally means you can't afford it. But I think the vast majority, 99.9% .9 of the 
people that we are talking to in this channel aren't going to want this version. Now, I know a couple of you expressed interest in this version because you wanted to know about 64-bit precision. And I think that is one of the limitations. So you see here, you get the Unigine engine. Uh, no OpenGL support, so it's DX11 on Windows only. There's a custom splash screen. Uh, in there and there's the part that's the kick. So the large world stuff that's 64 bit precision in the world So if you want to have gigantic scrolling landscapes and so on you got to upgrade to the full price version So that is one of the limitations for sure um, Embedding into proprietary apps. That's going to be incredibly niche for most people advanced video output So here you can have VR and then you get some other stuff curved screens video walls cave support Most of this stuff to be honest is used in a very niche environment that actually to be honest Unigine targeted pretty heavily So if you're doing you know trade show displays or whatever uh, This really isn't the right version for you But for most game makers the big one there is VR and you get VR uh, File format support you're also missing some of these things like uh, GIS or global Ge geometric in it's GIS data is for like landscape data real world map data and so on I forget what the exact acronym is but they are not supported in this particular version um, but otherwise yeah mostly yet you get motion capture via leap and connect but not art tracker and, and tes Tesla suits and then we get into a couple of things that are very specific to um, again high end version SQL my SQL support out of the box and all these different visioning systems again most of that stuff is pretty specialized to uh, the, you know the industrial industry so they, they've done a good job in that regard so to be honest of all the things I see right here the one that's gonna kind of annoy certain people for sure is the lack of large worlds so you only get 32 bit coordinate system so you can only make your world only uh, being what is that four four million by four million basically in size uh, whereas the one of their big features is the engineering and sim side that's 64 bit precision which makes your worlds huge basically uh we're talking um you know uh oh, what the hell is it called that that chris roberts game that's never going to come out kind of that in size uh so um for most people it's not going to matter this part obviously could burn a couple people and uh yeah, there's that. But the most, the biggest thing again between the community and the community pro community, you have that 100k. You can make up to 100 grand, same as basically what the Unity does. Uh, if you if you run into that as a revenue limit, I gotta admit, 150 bucks for removing that revenue limit. That's quite reasonable, to be honest. So, uh, yeah, that is it. That is Unigine Community. And on top of that, Unigine 2.11 was just released. Let's get to that right now. So this is here. Obviously, the biggest change with Community 2.11 is the release of the um, Community Edition, which is free for non-commercial, academic, and enthusiast, and has, again, that 100 grand version for people that are indies. Um, optimized performance, uh, so async node update, optimized bounds calculation, better input handling, and window management via SDL, improved particle shading, C-sharp component system, System updates, renaming, simple inheritance, parameter conditions, etc. Uh, significantly improved multi-channel rendering, revamped snicker system, no idea what that means. Uh, usability improvements and performance optimizations uh, in the Unigine editor, and Foxhole Archviz demo with both desktop and VR modes. And that's basically what is new in 2 on 1. Obviously, the big new thing there is that new... Um, community edition obviously but we got some improvements to the particle system support i will link this document i'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail about what these new features are all about and truth of the matter is unless you are already using um unigine the, the the relevance of a lot of this probably is lost on you anyways so i will link it though if you want to get into more details about what all these things are about so if you want to make that which actually looks really fun to be honest uh, you can but yeah so we got improvements again to the input handling that kind of stuff definitely nice things there so if you're interested in checking it out once again i will link everything it is available over at unigene.com um it's it's nice it, it's it's got my interest even in drunken sailor mode it, it's a cool looking engine with great capabilities and from the little bit that i played around with it it's also quite easy to pick up and learn so i'm going to try and do probably maybe, maybe my bowling symbol sample something like that so i get an idea of what the workflow is like and i will publish that to the channel as well so there's my follow-up on i think it was wednesday i said community edition was coming and just in time for the easter long weekend it is here so if you're looking for something to new something new to do the sign up is available unigene.com i will have all of the appropriate links down below so once again let me know what you think of it i know a lot of you are liking the fact that it's got this dark mode editor um it's it's an alternative to Unity and Unreal for sure. It's definitely in that same area. It's probably slightly above Zenko in terms of, actually it is above Zenko in terms of maturity and capability. The engines are very similar. This actually in some ways mostly reminds me of Zenko, but this is more tested, very battle tested. This has been used for I think about 15 years now. So it is a stable engine. They just kind of, hopefully it's not too little too late. They, they kind of came to the party too late with, or 
late with this pricing. But we'll find out if it's too late or not because they do have to compete against gigantic communities in the form of Unreal and Unity. So it's going to be interesting to see if at this point they can. Have they done this pricing structure five years ago? We would be talking about them a heck of a lot more in the game dev space. It'll be interesting to see what will happen now. And I'll be interested again in hearing your opinion on, uh, you know, too little, too late, interested. Because, uh, you know what, the funny thing is, in some ways, with recent actions from the likes of Unity, you know, switching over to Dots and basically kind of creating a brand new game engine there for the dot stuff. Uh, are they opening the door perhaps? Like, is this a new opportunity for another game engine to come in? Because you could sort of look at Dots, uh, Dots powered Unity as almost a completely new game engine and so much of the existing stuff is, you know, being reworked or broken that maybe it is the time that a competitor can get their foot in the door. Be interested in hearing again what you guys think, what you think of this, and uh, hopefully you're looking forward to the tutorial if I make one. And yeah, let me know. Talk to you all later. And again, happy holidays. Goodbye.